Welcome back to another genetic casting video and all that stuff. We have Arch versus Tommy, who is tired in Japanese, uh, but he's perfectly wide awake in Bavarian. Um, we're on Hub, Arrow Walk, Hub Three Arrow Q Three Underscore Next Underscore R Four. Thank God for making vocals shorter. Uh, Tommy's already taken a kill while I was rambling about absolutely nothing and making absolutely no sense to most people who don't know this game off by heart. And he's taken a second one as well, that's pretty quick. This is a very, very fast map. And there you go, this is even more fast. Um, Arch is going to be controlling a little bit of the map here. Both players kind of in the position where neither of them can take much of a control, and that was very, very quick, and I need to calm the fuck down! Alright then. So now, Arch... Oh, that was an absolutely beautiful shot, and the spawn fragging starts now. Um, glorious shot right before the teleporter entrance. In fact, so close to the teleporter entrance that the ragdoll went through. Beautiful shot. Arch is an absolute master of predictive shots like that. Pointing the shot. Look at that. Pointing the shot where the guy might be and shooting. Not aiming. There's no aiming for Arch with the next. Which is the proper way to do it. Um, Insta Unreal Tournament Instagib players will tell you uh, that if you want to hit someone point where they're probably going to be, wait for them to walk into your crosshair, and click. And it works very, very, very well. Try it next time you're playing with the Vortex. Arch has taken back control of this with those insane shots and that predictive style of hit scan. And... Oh, beautiful shot there from Tommy. And as Tommy in chat says, literally how he aims with the necks. And as we all know, Tommy has an enormous necks. So now you know, if you want a big necks, you got to aim like that. It is the best way to aim. It is a really calm way to aim. It especially works well um, when you've got more control in a CTF kind of environment. Uh, where you've got more control of where your opponent's coming from because you know they're probably going to come around a corner. But to counter that, come really wide round a corner sometimes instead of going very close. Art is now on the back foot, kind of not keeping track of the actual game. We're just going to do some overall commentary because sometimes it's fun to do something slightly different. I've done like 40 of these now. Let's go. So, this map is probably the most popular map, so if you are coming into this game brand new and watching this and completely confused, get used to the colour of these walls. Also, if you play Quake 3, get used to the colour of these walls. If you play Quake Live, get used to the surroundings of these walls, but they're going to be a bit bluer. If you play Quake World, you've already got used to the colour of these walls because every wall is made like this. 6-6 six to six the scoreline, we're 4 minutes into the game and a beautiful shot up there. As you can see, again, predictive. And that's one of the things about this map. Uh, everyone's played it such a large amount of times that basically everything you do is predictive play. Um, whether you realise it or not, most of what you're doing, you already know your, your opponent's probably going to do. It's kind of just picking the order in which your opponent's going to do it. But that's one of the fantastic things about this game. People have played thousands and thousands of games on this map. There are people who have spent more time uh, playing this map, this singular map, than... Uh, Probably than some people who started school this year have been alive. 
Right, there were probably some people who've spent four years on this map, being that it was in Quake World from 1996. Beautiful shot there from Tommy. Tommy's now 9-6 to six in the lead. Trying to take a little bit of control back though, because Arch has actually had a fair amount of control over this, but just hasn't been able to get the frags off. So, control in this game is important, but if you can get the frags, that's also important. Tommy's got a decent amount of control, though. You need a good amount of control over the map. And he's got positioning. This is the thing I think Tommy has far better than Arch uh, right now on this map. We're seeing Tommy has incredible positioning. Look at that. Positioned. Knew where Tommy was coming, uh, where Arch was coming from. And Tommy positioned himself into a very nice place to take the shot. Tommy seems to always have that positioning. Whereas Arch, he's out of position a lot more. And that might just be perspective bias. So Tommy's out of position a lot when they don't see each other. But at the same time, it doesn't seem to be. That was a very nice jump there. Uh, going all the way from the health all the way over. Nice shot from Arch. Again, the predictive little shot. Aiming where you're going to think they're going to be. And then taking the shot. Really well done. Really well executed. I've... Oh, that was a fantastic frag there. And then waiting around. If you kill someone and you're in that position, they are really, really likely to spawn at the other end of the map. Uh, pretty much in two positions. And you just kind of aim down in that direction because you might get them. Now a fight over the Mega Health. Tommy's going to get out of there after Arch takes it very quickly. Not much damage dealt from either side. I think Tommy did a little more damage than Arch, but Arch did pick up the health, so... Evens out a little bit there. We've got around two and a half minutes left on the clock here. It is a very close game. Tommy's definitely playing a more passive game now. He's got a bit of a lead. It's a bit early to go full passive, but he's definitely not going full passive. It's a more passive game when he knows he's losing a fight. Um, he's backing out. He's not pushing it. Whereas before he was pushing it, making that, making it happen. Whereas now he's not pushing so many fights, trying not to lose the frags. But he's still keeping himself in control, which is a very good thing. Because if you don't keep yourself with some control and you lose... If Tommy loses one more frag, he's got to get another. Uh, so if he was to lose all control, so he's still picking things up and he finds another frag. If he was taking, losing all control, he would be scuppered right now. Finds another one back, three frags in the lead. Getting even closer towards the end. So we're either going to see an amazing comeback or some very clever play from Tommy. Just what I was speaking about. You want to be able to hold control and play it's a hell of a lot more difficult than it sounds when i just talk about it like this which is why i just talk about the game and rarely ever play it anymore arch trying to grab a bit more control he's only got a minute left but this map is so quick you can very easily with a little bit of luck and uh well, a little bit of skill and quite a bit of luck could take this back. The game is mostly skill, but at the same time, there's a lot of luck involved in this sort of comeback. Tommy playing very close to him. That's the sort of luck we're talking about. We're talking about these respawn frags. Talking about how close people can spawn and where people spawn. And if you know where they're going to spawn, you can managed to get a rocket going towards them a beautiful shot that was a flick shot we didn't even see that so we only get 30 ticks demos we didn't even see the shot there nice shot from tommy we've got 15 seconds left two frags to make up it is possible but 
Ah, it's getting away from Arch and Tommy is playing a clever game. Now he can just spawn delay so it's not going to happen. Tommy's holding in the corner probably behind over with the grenade launcher. And there we go. Tommy takes it. 13 to 11. Very close game. Back and forth very quickly at the end there. And some very interesting things to be talked about. Some very interesting tactics and the way these two are playing. Thank you very much for watching. Send me your demos. I am MX Craven on IRC. I would love to cast them. Thank you to Arch for sending this one in. Thank you, Tommy, for playing. And uh, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. See you in the next one.